In this video, I'll show you how to apply the G3 Elastic Folks motions to your little mates. So first of all, load up your little mate into stage mode. From your content manager, select a motion from the Elastic Folks side view. If I go to the Move folder and scroll down to Walking, you can see there are three walking files, the Start, Loop and End. Simply drag the Start motion onto your little mate and the animation will be automatically applied and he will start walking. If you open up your motion track on the timeline, you can see the motion. Then simply add the next motion you want and then chain them together. In this case, we'll add the walking loop motion at the end of the previous motion and they will seamlessly link together. If you want to make the walk cycle longer, then select it and click loop from the menu. Then click on the right side of the motion and it will automatically loop the motion for you. Finally, in this video, we'll add the walk end motion to the timeline at the end of our sequence and Ted will finish walking. Then when I play the video back from the beginning, all the motions blend perfectly together and Ted is in motion. In addition to applying G3 Elastic Folks motions to your little mates, you may also want to keyframe your own movements or make adjustments to motions. This is easy to do using the Motion Key Editor, where you can manually move each bone. Load your little mate to stage mode and open your timeline. Select the Motion button from the menu bar, then open your Motion Key Editor. Now, each bone of your little mate has its own line on the timeline that controls its individual movement. In this video, I'll select the scientist's upper arm, and as you can see, there's a black dot at frame 1 on its timeline, showing that this is the keyframed position at this point of the timeline. If I move to frame 20 on the timeline for the arm, I can change the position of the arm, and a new keyframe representing this change in position is added to the arm's timeline. Now when I go back to the frame 1, the arm starts in its original position and when I hit play, the arm will change its position through those 20 frames until it comes to the keyframe at frame 20 and then it will freeze in that position. If I copy the arm's keyframe at frame 20 and then paste that into frame 40, this means that the arm will hold its position between frames 20 to 40 because the arm doesn't change position or move. So from frame 1 to 20, he will raise his arm, and from frame 20 to 40, the arm will hold position. Then at frame 60, I can make him put his arm down again by changing its position, and a keyframe for the new arm position is automatically added to the arm's timeline. So when we go along the timeline from the beginning, the scientist will raise his arm, hold it, and then put it back down again. Simply apply these steps to any bones to manually animate your character's movement. In this video, I'll show you how you can swap your little mate's hands and face sprites to create any number of hand gestures and emotions. The little mate's characters are not set up for facial puppeteering due to the fact that some of their facial expressions are quite a bit more exaggerated and cartoony. Instead, I've included a wide range of sprites so your little mates can express themselves in any number of ways. Multiple sprites are included for the hands, hair and facial features. On screen, I have Office Guy number 1, and if I select the Sprite Editor and click on his hair, we can see the different hairstyles and colours that are available. Each character comes with the three original Little Mates hairstyles, plus one hairstyle that is unique to them. And each hairstyle comes in five colours with matching eyebrows. Clicking on different face elements will show any other options available for that part. Each Little Mate also comes with at least one unique hand sprite. With the office guy here, the hand holding his pencil is unique to him. Many of these sprites are also included as prop files, so they can be easily linked to your little mates and therefore swapped between characters for even greater variety.
As G3 characters, the little mates are built using PNG files as opposed to vector files. And as a result, they cannot take advantage of the render style option. But that doesn't mean you can't change the look of each character. As well as the wide range of body part sprites that are included with each little mate, I've also included a lot of the hair and body parts as prop files that can be swapped between characters and applied simply by using the link function. For example, on screen we have the handyman little mate, and in the men's hair folder in the prop section, I have the hair prop from the scientist little mate. I drag the scientist's hair onto the stage and resize it. Then I select the handyman, click the sprite editor, and select his hair, and choose a blank hair slot to make his hair invisible. I reposition the new hair on the handyman, then click link from the top menu and select his head, and the hair is now linked to the head and will move with the character. The same can be done with other body parts, including hands and facial features. As you can see here, when I've applied the new hair, it now sits in front of the handyman's ear, which doesn't look quite right. I also include the ear prop so you can link it over the top of the hair and make your character look just right. Now with everything in place and linked to your character, you can move him about and animate him. In this video, I'll explain how to get the best results out of lip syncing your little mate to an audio file. First, load your little mate into the stage mode, then select Create Script. To apply a pre-recorded voice track, click on Wave File and select your audio file, which will appear on the voice clip track of your character's timeline. When you play your animation, Crazy Talk Animator 3 will now automatically select the mouth sprites for lip syncing. For more precise results, you can select the sprite editor, click on your little mate's mouth, and then manually select the mouth sprites that best match your audio.